PDFs are huge in business, and while theoretically this format type is supposed to be a locked format, there are completely legitimate reasons why you might at some point in time need to make alterations to a PDF. For example, what if you just lost the original document? Maybe you found a spelling error and you need to go back and correct it. What if you have a graphic that is older and needs to be updated and replaced? Maybe you have links inside of your PDF that now go to websites that don't exist and you need to update those links. These are just a few examples of the different things that you can do inside the piece of software PDF Expert. And today I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know about it, so buckle up. Here we go with PDF Expert coming up next on Tech Talk America. All right, I know anytime I've ever reviewed software, you guys always like to know right up front how the money thing works. I like to be the full disclosure guy, so here's how it works. If you would like to try PDF Expert, it is a free one week trial. There is a link to where you can download it. It's a direct link right in the description of this video. Now, if you do decide to buy it, it's as of today's date, $59, and that covers three computers. So for example, if you have multiple users on each computer, that's fine. It's three computers per one license. While today in this class we're going to be covering the version for the Mac, I do want to let you know that there is also a version of this software available for iPhone or iPad. Now it gets a little bit complicated here, so just let me take a moment to explain this. Okay, so the iOS version, whether you run it on your iPhone or your iPad, is completely separate from this piece of software. So if you decide to get the mobile version, that's as of today's date, $10. And then if you need the ability to actually make alterations from mobile, which not everyone does, uh, that is also an additional in-app charge of $10. Now for anyone in business, this is absolutely nothing. This is a major business tool uh, that it is giving you the abilities to, to do certain things on your phone that otherwise you might need something more of a computer to do. I also want to make sure that I point out that if you uh, are in the kind of business where you need to be able to sign a PDF from your iPhone, that is where the mobile version is very, very good. So at this point, folks, we're going to switch over to my uh, computer back here, and I'm going to teach you how to use this piece of software. All right, folks, so the way I'm going to teach this class is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to kind of navigate this piece of software, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go back and show you a bunch of the various tools that you have access to uh, within this piece of software. So let's open up PDF Expert. This is similar to what you will see uh, if you should decide to get it. Uh, when you first open it up, you see a little history here of the documents that you have recently looked at. It should look pretty familiar, similar to several other applications out there. Uh, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to open up a document here as I start to kind of show you this. Now, I've obviously changed uh, any sensitive information uh, for the, the purpose of this video. Uh, so if you look up here at the top of the screen, you'll see here we have these two different categories. We have annotate mode and we have edit mode. And you'll see when I switch back and forth between these two, the tools that you have access to located right here in the toolbar switch. So for example, and again, we're going to go through these much more thoroughly in a little bit. Uh, for example, in annotate, we have access to things like the ability to highlight or if you need to add uh, text as a note. So for example, if you're a teacher and you're correcting someone's paper, you could kind of do it in red. Uh, you could add something like an arrow or any kind of a shape that you want. This is also the section where you go to add something like a signature uh, and uh, do a bunch of other little things here. Now, when I switch over to edit mode, that is where you really have the ability to change what is already in the document. So for example, uh, in this case, if I was going to, you know, change the name of this person, okay, you'll notice as I move my cursor, see how it's kind of intelligently, well, attempting to intelligently uh, select different groupings of text. So if you kind of think about what is this software doing in the background, you know, a PDF is really just an image of text. So it's really trying to interpret it uh, and then give you the ability, of course, to manipulate it. Uh, now, one thing that's kind of cool is, uh, and while it doesn't really technically apply to this document uh, so much, but if you had some sort of like a weird funky font that your document had. Actually, I have a perfect example of this. Give me one moment. Let me uh, remember where I, where did I put that? Let's open up. Ah, here we go. 
Uh, so this is just a menu that I downloaded. Okay, let's say you couldn't remember, oh, what was the font that we used for this? Okay, well, let's say maybe instead of the word starters, we're gonna change it to the word apps. Okay, so one of the nice things with a PDF is the fact that everything here is embedded, including the fonts. So uh, what I can do is I can kind of click into here, and if I wanna change it, instead of saying starters, I wanna call it, you know, apps. Check that out, it matched the font identically, and I was able to make that simple change. Even though, theoretically speaking, a PDF is kind of a locked document-ish, uh, that does give me the ability to go ahead and make those kinds of alterations. The next thing I wanna show you is how to navigate the sidebar. So if you look up here at the top left corner, uh, you can see here we have a bunch of different little icons. Right now, currently, I'm clicked on this first one, and that makes this little window on the side pop out. And there are four different tabs that you'll see here. We have bookmarks, outline, annotations, and thumbnails. Now, usually for me, I tend to spend most of my time over here in thumbnails, but I do want to show you what the others uh, do. So for example, here under bookmarks, uh, maybe the PDF that you're reading is an actual book. You can add a bookmark. It's very simple. All you have to do is whatever page you're on, there's actually two ways that you can do it. You can hit the little plus add bark bookmark button that you see down here at the bottom left, or uh, provided that you're under annotate, you have a little bookmark up here at the top left. You'll see I'll turn it off, I turn it on, and now it appears over here on the left-hand side. The next one we have here is outline. So uh, if you were trying to kind of maybe create a book or something like that, you could use this as one way to kind of see where everything is. So in order to do this, uh, all you have to do, you can either hit add item, which will bring it to the same page, very, very similar in that sense to bookmark. Uh, but the other thing that you can do is you can highlight it. So just click and drag over the text. And then when you go to secondary click, you'll see one of the options here is add outline item. Okay, so now if I want, I could go through and add each of the different sections here. So that way I could just kind of quickly jump to these different parts of my PDF. The next item here uh, we're going to switch over to is annotations. So uh, if you work on the document or if you have someone else work on the document, if you're doing kind of a shared type situation, uh, you'll be able to see all of the different annotations here cleanly on the left hand side. So if I want to jump to whatever this note is, you'll see when I click on it, it goes right to this area. And this is where I have my little note in this case. The last tab that you'll see here at the top left is the thumbnails view. Now this does not give you the ability to reorder pages. This is really just kind of as a visual way for you to quickly scan the document. So let's say maybe you were just kind of scanning some sort of a real estate document looking for where it says sign here. You could probably pretty quickly from the thumbnails view pick out where that is and jump to it. Uh, now, the next thing I want to show you is up here at the top left, uh, next to the icon that brought out the sidebar, we're going into page thumbnail view. Now, there's a couple of different things that you can do here. Uh, one thing is, let's say I want to swap pages three and four. I can literally just drag and drop and boom, they're reordered. Other things you can do from here, uh, even if I did not, uh, even if I'm not the original creator of this PDF, uh, I could add a page. Now, when you do add a page, that's just gonna add a blank page. So you could then you know, copy and paste in whatever text or however you decide to do it. The other thing that you can do from here is let's say you have two different PDFs that you now want to merge into one or maybe even just part of a second PDF. So at this point, what you can do is you can go up here to append file, click on it. Uh, let me just find, this, this is my demo account. So let me just go into some, oh, this is the, the other document I was just working on. Okay, so now you can see I brought that uh, menu PDF into this document. So you can take two different PDFs or however, however many you want and you can bring them all into one. You'll also see up here we have options to copy and paste, which is really handy if you're trying to, uh, maybe you're trying to duplicate a format, maybe you're some sort of a you know church with a newsletter and you maybe don't have the original files anymore. Well, with that, you can just kind of go through, copy and paste sections, and boom, your formatting will stay pretty much the same. I know, terrible example, right? Uh, other options, if you want to delete an individual page, you can do that. I'll just do it to the blank one now. No, goodbye. Uh, share, so if you want to share, just like with any pretty much of the other Apple documents, uh, Apple applications out there, you can go directly from here to mail, messages, blah, blah, blah. Uh, or you can extract it. So let's say you want to uh, take one page from this PDF and extract it and create a separate PDF. You have the ability to do that here. Let me just show you real quickly. 
throw it on the desktop, save, and there it is. Voila. Okay. All right, moving on. The last icon that you'll see right here is the view settings. So there are several different ways that you can view your document. Um, so for page layout, you can do single page layout. You can see here, it kind of just keeps it nice and clean. That's, that's actually what I use most of the time. Or some people like to kind of go one over. So you have your page one is right here. Page two is on the side. Uh, there's also split view options. So this would be kind of, I, I'm gonna go back to that terrible example. Uh, if you're trying to maybe make two different documents look similar, uh, a newsletter as an example. So what you could do is you could have open uh, on one side of the screen, you know, maybe the last, you know, good newsletter and then a blank one on the side so that we can kind of, you know, go back and forth between the two. You could copy and paste. Uh, but a lot of times if you are going to be going back and forth between two different documents, that may be very handy to you. And basically you can either view this so that it's split vertically or horizontally, just whichever way is better for you. I think that would make me crazy. I tend to just like to stay here on single page layout, but that's just for what I do. Okay, uh, let's start to go through some of these actual tools, starting with under annotate. So the uh, first three tools here, I think are pretty self-explanatory. We have highlight, we have underline and strike through. Next over here, we have the pen tool. So uh, this is going to be uh, very handy. I think especially this would be handy if you have a stylus. Now they do make an iPhone and iPad version. So if you have something like the Apple Pencil, uh, this, I'm sure, would be very, very handy uh, in the mobile version of this. But I can use my cursor, and I can just, you know, say, you know, cool, as you see my absolutely horrible handwriting when I'm trying to write from my trackpad. Any uh, tools as far as uh, making adjustments to whatever you've done as far as, you know, the width, all of that obviously you see over here on the right-hand side. Uh, other things here, you have eraser. Now the eraser is not is not for text because keep in mind, we're under annotate right now. So if I use the eraser, it's just going to erase my annotation, nothing else. The little letter T that you see here at the very top is to add text as an annotation. Now this is different than changing the text that's actually in the document. This is just if you're gonna add like a little note. So I would imagine that a lot of times this you'd probably have in red uh, be a great feature for someone like a teacher. The next tool that you'll see here is to add a shape. Uh, the one that I tend to use the most is an arrow. So if I need to add an arrow to point out something here, I can just click and drag. And just like pretty much every other program out there, if you need to change the direction of this arrow, you just have to grab this little blue dot and then you can drag it and reposition it wherever you want. And then as far as changing things like the width, all of those tools, you guessed it, are right over here on the right-hand side. Uh, also the ability to change the color. Next tool we have here is to add a note. And I really love this feature because this is a very clean way to leave someone feedback. You know, I, I never really liked it when I was a kid when I would get back, you know, feedback from a teacher and just the entire paper is just red, you know, that was that was my paper. Um, yep, I was that kid. So uh, l let's go to add a note. This is the, the nice, clean way to do that. So let's just scroll through this document and let's say I wanna leave some feedback at the end of this page. So what I can just do is I can, uh, I've clicked into the note tool, I'll just click and you can see it kinda adds a little sticky note. I can type in my feedback here and when I'm done, it just kind of disappears off into this little graphic. And what I would like to point out to you at this point is uh, if, you, if you look back over here on the left-hand side, you'll notice that I'm now over on uh, annotations. It just makes it very, very easy for me to kind of find where these notes are because if you look right here, it says, oh, on page two, there's a note that starts with, and it says this. So if I click it, it just kind of jumps to right there. Very nice little tool. The next one here, I think a lot of you in business, legal, areas, real estate, those of you, you're gonna love this feature. So this is the ability to add a stamp. So let's say this is a legal document that you're working on and you need to have someone initial at the bottom of each page. You could just go over here to stamps, select the uh, little one that we have here for initial, and then click into your document wherever you would like that graphic to appear. Now, if you need to resize it, you can grab any corner and then just drag to the right or left in order to make it larger or smaller. 
If you'd like to create a customized stamp, this is kind of a cool thing that you can do. Uh, let's go back up here to the top right. You'll see that uh, I was just here under standard. Now we're gonna switch over to custom mode. So let's click on add stamp. You'll see here I can type in whatever I want. Let's just put signature. Okay, I can choose whatever color I would like it to be. You can also see here that we have the ability to add the date and time, if you'd like, uh, to that stamp. Uh, or if you'd like, if you have some sort of other image that you would like to use, you can hit import image. Uh, I would like to give you one little piece of advice here. Uh, it tends to be very handy if you, uh, if you have the ability uh, to have the image as a PNG format. Uh, the reason why I say that is PNG files are transparent. So uh, especially if your document has any color to it, uh, that can be a very handy thing. Okay, let's hit done. And you see here, if I just click, boom, I've got my customized signature. Next one we have here is the ability to add a signature, okay? So you can see here uh, that we can add signatures right here on the right-hand side. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can have it just kind of automatically do it. You can just basically type in your name. As you can see, that's what I just did uh, for that last one there. Or if you want, uh, if you have way better control uh, than I do, uh, you can use your trackpad if you would like to uh, use that. Or alternatively, you can uh, just pull from an image. So if you have an image file, uh, you can just pull it from that. So there actually is one other way to store a signature inside of this application. And in order to do that, you just basically have to pull up a document that you have at some point signed. So what I'm going to do here is I've uh, paused the recording in the moment. Uh, I paused the recording a moment ago just so I can kind of open up this document. Uh, and removed a lot of the sensitive data from it. So uh, here you can see I have just kind of a, a document and I have a signature right here. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is how to extract that signature from that, basically this is an image, keep in mind that's what a PDF is, is it's an image of text. Uh, and we're going to extract it. And what's kind of interesting here, which I would like to point out to you, is that in the case of this signature, see how the M, I think I think that's an M, I don't know, this isn't my document. Uh, you see how it crosses over the word landlords here? Well, when we are done with this, it is going to separate those two layers. It will automatically rebuild the word landlords. And when I go to save the signature, it'll remove the word landlords from the background. Follow that? Okay, great, let's do it. Okay, so in order to do this, what we actually have to do is we have to switch out of annotate mode and we have to switch over to edit mode because basically when you think about what is a signature, it's basically an image. So what we're gonna do is we're going to now just kind of cursor over and you see how as I move my cursor over this document, how it's kind of intelligently trying to group text together. I mean, it's doing the best that it can. Um, because keep in mind, this is actually pretty complex. But watch this, when I get to the signature, it automatically has figured out that that signature is separate from what is behind it. Now when I click on it, you'll see over here on the right hand side, uh, we have the image. And I wanna show you a little trick here. So a couple of things that we can do from this point. We could replace it with a different signature. We could export it, but here's the thing. There are two different ways that you can actually export this. Uh, and I don't think they even really mention this on their own website. Uh, so if you hit export here, notice what happens. It's a JPEG. And in certain conditions, you're gonna want that. And in some, condi some conditions, rather, you're not gonna want that. Uh, as I made a reference to earlier, a PNG file format is transparent. So if your document background has any color to it, in this case, it's gonna have a white background. Okay, so it's going to be pretty clear that this was copied and pasted in, pasted in. So as opposed to, if I hit cancel, check this out, I can secondary click instead and then go to save and check it out. It is no longer a JPEG, it is now a PNG. And just to prove to you that I'm not making this stuff up, let's do it. Let's hit quick preview and check it out. So you'll notice that it's a grayed out background, so that is transparent. So if I wanted to store that as a signature to use for the future, now what I could do is I could go back over to annotate mode, go back here under signatures, add a signature, pull from image, select file. It's on the desktop right there. So save, open, and we're good to go. So now if I needed to add that to this document, I'm just gonna add it right here. I can just click, and just like with the others, if I needed to resize it, I can just grab the corners and voila.
The final tool that we're talking about here under Annotate is the Content Selection Tool. So this is basically used for two different things. Uh, one you're probably going to use more than the other. Uh, so one is going to be for copying and pasting sections. So let's say I want to copy this green box. I can just click and drag to create a little box around it. Then I can secondary click. You can see I can copy it and then just use my keyboard using normal paste. I can just you know, hit paste command V and I can recreate it. Let's hit delete. The other thing that you'll notice that you could do there if you wanted is if you did want to crop it, you can click up here at the top right to crop it. Just keep in mind that is going to change the size of your document. Okay, let's switch over at this point to edit. Notice that here at the top, I'm not actually clicked into any of these tools that are here under the edit menu. So just with my cursor as the normal arrow mode, there are a couple of things that I can do. For example, let's say I wanted to change the spacing of these uh, different bullet points. I could click into each of these fields and then click again and drag it to move it to a different part of the page. Another thing I could do from here, theoretically, is I could actually delete it if I want to. I just click on it, hit the delete key, and it'll wipe it out. Now, the next item that you'll see here, the first item technically on the list, is text. So this is to actually make alterations to the text itself. What you have to understand about this is that if I was going to replace, let's say, this sentence with something much larger, it might have some trouble doing that because the problem is, is that each of these groups of text are seen as individual. They're not seen as a normal document. So just understand that if you're going to be changing text in a PDF, this isn't really as as something that you would use as normal document software. It's not Word. It's not Pages. Uh, so this is really going to help you with something like uh, on one of the other example documents I used, I had a lease, uh, you know, changing someone's name from one name to another name if you have a new tenant, something like that. Uh, so that's what this text tool is really for more than anything. The next one you'll see here is the image tool. So for example, if I scroll here to the top of this document, there's an image here at the top. Uh, let's say I want to update this, maybe uh, me with the beard, since this is kind of an old image. Uh, I could just hit replace and then swap out that graphic with a different one. The next tool that we're going over here is the linking feature. So this is the ability to see where links are going uh, and also update them if you need to. So let's say on this PDF, uh, which I created years ago, uh, I have at the bottom, I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, yes, I have a bunch of different apps and products that I had recommended to people. Let's say one of those websites changed over the years and I needed to now update that for this newer version. As you can see here, under the link mode, I can kind of easily see each of these links and if I need to make any kind of alterations, I can just click into them and I can see where it's going to and I can update it to the correct address. Another thing that you should be aware that you can do uh, within a PDF is you can create a link to a different page. So if you want to uh, maybe make it so that, hey, if you want to read about this section, jump to page 12. You can make it so that if they click on where you have the word, you know, with the number 12, it will automatically jump to that page. So you just update it right here and then direct it to wherever you want it to jump down to. The last tool that we're going to be talking about here today is Redact. And there's a couple of things that you can do here. You can either use this tool to black out text or you can use it to just simply erase text. Where this is especially handy is with names. Uh, when you have certain types of legal documents, you might need to uh, keep certain types of sensitive information private, and this is a really easy way to do it. Another thing, check this out. Over here on the right-hand side, we have a Find and Redact feature. So uh, on this particular page that I just happen to be on, you see how the word Enable is a bunch here? Okay, I'm going to just type in the word Enable over here and check it out. It found every single instance where I use that word, enable, enable, enable. All right, and now I can either go through and I can black these out one at a time, or with one click, every single place on this document where it just had the word enable is now redacted, just like that. Now, the other thing that you can do here is you can just manually choose which text to remove. So for example, let's say I wanna get rid of this first paragraph. Currently, I'm under blackout mode, so I can just Click and drag over all of this, and voila, it's gone. Uh, let me undo that just so you can see this, as opposed to erase, where I just use this 
and it just removes that layer. So sometimes this is going to be a, a, an easier tool for you compared to before when we were kind of under text mode and we were selecting and deleting. Um, it really kind of depends on your document, but the idea here is that there are, uh, depending on the, the image itself that you're dealing with, uh, how many layers you're dealing with. Both of these tools could definitely be helpful to you in some situations. Now, if you ever need to set a password to your document, all you have to do is open up your document, go to File, and you'll see right down here towards the bottom, it says Set Password. And yes, that password uh, feature will still work if you send it to someone who's on something like a Windows PC or just a different operating system than what you're running. And finally, the last thing I did want to show you here is that also under the file menu, there is a one-click option to reduce the file size of your document. Uh, so you can choose how much you want it to uh, apply this feature, but if you have a very, very large PDF that you need to get to be a little bit more friendly as far as its uh, final size, um, and it still looks pretty good, I have to say, it does a, it does a pretty darn good job. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I do hope you enjoyed this class. If you did, I do appreciate it. If you hit that little thumbs up like button down below, leave me a little comment. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in me covering the iOS version of this app, leave me a note for that down below too. If I get enough requests, maybe I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, also, finally, before we go here, for any of you out there who are interested in taking a little private lesson with me, uh, I know not everyone out there learns from a YouTube video. Some people just like that personal touch. Uh, I've been doing private lessons for years now. I, I love doing it. It's a great way for me to get to connect with all of you out there so that you're more than just a number on my view count. All the information is on my website at techtalkamerica.com slash private lessons. There's also a link down below. Thank you for watching, everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.